Hey, this will be a quick video, and I'm doing this because I have a unique vantage. I am a little bit different in the sense that I listen to. Hold on one second. Yeah, I'm. I'm a little different. I've listen to a lot of Tariq Nasheed, a lot of uh, the ADOS founders, and especially recently with ADOS founders, because I went and looked at some of the backlog. So I can recognize the lies and I can recognize the truth because I'm familiar with them. And for the most part, if you see the title of this video, you think I'm just siding against Tariq. I think Tariq's right about certain things. And I will mention that. I might even call up Yvette and talk about it. I don't know. The first thing, I'm, I'm gonna mention what he's right about first, because to me, he had somewhat of an, uh, a grievance that I think was real. And he went completely off the map into the most nonsensical conspiracies I could have imagined. And I'm, you know, not on any side but reality. Because I don't think you can go forward if you're just like, oh, we're all going to agree to lie. Then you end up in Talib Kweli shoulder monkey land. And I think that's where... Tariq Nasheed is right now. He's into the I'm just going to lie and exploit people's ignorance land. And I've always thought that he's flirted with that, but I've never really called him out because I never thought he went there until now. But in his defense, he didn't start it. So I'm just going to go into how this started. This started because Antonio Moore, who usually blocks anybody who's trolling a little bit, did not block Ebro, and Ebro, and this is after, right after the New York Times article painted ADOS as being a conservative, as conservative as they possibly could without lying beyond just rhetoric and language. And it, it, got, it gets so deep that Jason Black did a great job analyzing this bullshit, and Tariq even acknowledges this, which makes his stupid theories even stupider because this is what they did they went out of their way to paint ados as being favored by conservatives in a way that was just not true just and a lot of that came from talib kwali talib kwali is orchestrating much of this anti-reparations division and it's a shame because one other thing i can say in favor of Tariq, i think he's underrated when it comes to political knowledge, political genius, he makes some of the best and unmade reparation arguments. Like when he starts talking about how I'm not too pr proud to beg, we always begging, well, y'all always begging. You know, so I'm not, and he completely diffuses that language of respectability politics, where I don't want to check. He's like, well, where are y'all cutting the checks? If I was at the uh, HR 40 hearing, I'm not leaving without a check. He diffuses all of that lazy shaming, respectability politics. He's really good at that. There's a reason why the Democrats are constantly coming at him, because he can move people. He can motivate people. That's a good sign politically. That's why Trump is in office. He's not, you know, astute when it comes to technical shit. But as Tariq would say, charisma. So... I think this is a bigger loss, a, bi a bigger victory for white supremacy by proxy, or I should say a bigger victory for Tlaib Kweli by proxy of white supremacy because he was the one who was telling Ebro, hey, all of the stuff about ADOS being on Trump's dick and all that. So Ebro is like, hey, look at this. This is the same dude who said ADOS is funded by Nazis. So I don't know why the hell. Uh, tone fell for this bullshit other than he's probably sick because one thing 
Tone, Yvette, and this needs to be said, and Sandy Darity, they're all liberal and they're all Democrats. Now, they may be disgruntled Democrats and they're trying to do to the party something that's similar to what the Tea Party did to Republicans. It didn't take a large group. They're trying to take over the Democratic Party. So when people are calling them who are more liberal, and when I tried to point this out to the New York Times article, man, I might have been the person who, who placed the death nail on the channel because I sent a copy of that video to the Times. And now their, their channel gets taken down. Right around the time Byron Allen is, is fighting Comcast, and if you look at the specific language, it's your ability to sue. They're not going, see the thing is, and I went back and forth with Morpheus about this, and I'm like, dude, I've heard this, but I haven't read it. You know, so I'm just like going by people's word. But when you look at specifically what they're challenging, they're challenging the ability to sue. This is bigger than Byron Allen. Yeah. Because there, if there was a um, class action lawsuit, we'd have a good case for discrimination with, with uh, Google. But good luck if that doesn't go through. You'd have to prove 100% that this was all about race. Which you're not going to be able to do. So they started. He should have ignored Ebro. Should have blocked Ebro. He should have DM Tariq. But Tariq's reaction really just shows that the dude is overly sensitive, does not know how to deal with people, and will result instead, even when he has a legit grievance, will result to just, okay, I'm going to fall back and come up with stupid conspiracies. And now his conspiracies, and they're all over the place. He's retweeting that ADOS is MAGA. Then he turns around and says they're co-opted by the Democratic Party. Now, how in the fuck would I co-opt something that is already something? They're already Democrats. And they're already on some, they've been on some boat down. Shit, Byron Allen, he, now he's saying Byron Allen is a Democrat. Or, or they're trying to rally behind this. Look, the Democratic Party always rallies behind civil rights type shit like this. But it, the notion that this is all like un, un schedule for this grand conspiracy just does not sit because they're already Democrats and they already outline uh, the logic behind a down ballot vote, down ballot vote. And, and it's plenty logical. And if you disagree with it, then hash out the details. You don't need this crazy other you know, Democrats. They co-opted them. Don't mind all the attacks coming from Democrats. Don't mind the complete frame ADOS is MAGA, which you retweeted. Don't mind all that. Don't, you know, this is, this is what I mean. He's lying to exploit ignorance. Because they were all, not just already Democrats, very liberal. And if you look at their reasons for voting down, they, it's a little bit different depending on who you're talking about. If it's if it's um, a vet or tone, tone is more like, hey, reparations is a big government liberal policy. Um, we need people who are are going to at least be okay with the number amount, which are more like more likely to be liberals. And when you're voting local you're more likely to encounter someone who is a legit liberal who may be into reparations and a lot of these pseudo... Because when's the last time we had a liberal president? You know, and when's the last time we had a president that was ever receptive to reparations? I mean, damn, you got to go back to restruction, reconstruction and that didn't last. So you don't have, you don't have that. So when you're voting down, you're basically saying, OK, I'm, I know my hopefully I know where I live. I know, you know, what type of Green Party or or a more liberal Democrat might be OK with reparations. Like even where I live, I know we have people that were in H.R. 40 before the fuckery. You know, so 
I'm more likely if I'm voting to say, okay, you know, I think I got these people in the bag. I don't know for sure because the HR 40 conference really soured me on HR 40. Another and an even bigger reason to vote down is like recently, and this is something Tariq should know because he knows the brother it happened to. And so do I, really. I might have to contact him like, yo, you got it. You got to talk to Tariq because this, this conspiracy shit is bullshit. But if you're familiar with him, Andre, um, huh, I'm forgetting his name, man. You'd have to go back. But if you, if you look up the law in Seattle for police brutality, what they did was they shifted the burden from it before it was a police officer said he's scared. You know what? That's his feelings. If he says it, that's his feelings. You go by that. Now it's up to a jury. Doesn't mean you can't finesse a jury. It's just if you have it like that, it's going to reduce. And so far, at least it has reduced um, crazy ass um, race soldier killings, because now it's like I walk. I'm going to have to rely on the police union to finesse the jury or I'm going to walk in and I can't just say, hey, there was uh, some dude unarmed walking down the street with his back to me, but I was still scared because he reached for his waist. Then, you know, a jury's more likely to say, well, maybe he was scratching. You know, you got to. And they were and, and because of that, they weren't convicting cops. And that's not to say you can't get around shit like that. But if it ain't shit like that, it's stopping for us. It's a new prison being built. It's stand your ground. And if your policy is don't vote, because if we don't vote, it'll piss off the Democratic Party and then they're going to come to us with something. Well, that may be true, but you can address the other shit and still not be that lazy group. And this is one thing Yvette says, if you don't vote at all, you're just going to be lazy people who cost the election. Now we got to stop fucking with you, get rid of you, replace you with... um. I don't know, I guess like some new immigrants or something. And the thing about that is I don't think you, you look, you're basically doing the same thing because voting local for a lot of people is just not voting at all because they don't know the shit. Or it's show up and give a yellow ballot, put a little drop of urine on the presidency. Maybe you, you know, like Yvette said, you might know the dog catcher or something like that. You might know somebody who's running city council. But for the most part, Vote local is starving the Democratic Party, because if they can't win the White House, then you're you're um, and you got people who are, are more astute and aren't going to vote for like the Diane Feinstein's of the world and, and the obvious racist Democrats. That is surgical voting with just a simpler slogan. And that should not cause no goddamn friction and stupid ass conspiracy theories that the people who are attacked by Democrats are secretly co-opted when they've always been Democrats. Matter of fact, you could have been you could have made this case a long time ago. Tariq just said that they were heaven sent. He just said ADOS was heaven sent. He could have. And he says he doesn't listen to ADOS. Well, if you're ignorant, shut the fuck up. That's the same shit Tlaib Kweli said. And you know what? Tlaib Kweli as ignorant and a son of a bitch as he is, he knew he could, he could rattle, he could exploit ignorance. He does it all the time. He's, a, he's good at it. You know, and like I said, I, one other thing I think Tariq is right about. I don't think the FBA conference is competition, but I tell you what, Tariq, you're not getting my money now. I was okay with that argument because I... I look at ADOS, and this is one thing where I'm critical, and I say, how are you going to get reparations without buying Republicans? How do you buy Republicans with the Florida Evans mentality? Oh, we got, nah, you want to throw a big little thing and maybe get some celebrities to throw some real money around and get some attention, because Tariq is right. The FBA conference was more competition for um, revolt, the revolt summit. Yeah, if you look up Andre and um, not this time, you'll see what I mean about 
you want to go you want to go vote just to see if there is something good and if you don't see anything if you got a diane feinstein or even a kamala harris or something like that you give them a yellow ballot you put a little drop of urine on there and you keep on walking but you want to at least be the smart voting block. That's basically all they're saying when they talk about voting down. You don't need some conspiracy that the person in Byron Allen who sued Obama, who to this day calls Obama a, a black man and, and you know, or, or, or white man in blackface. The you, you don't come up with a conspiracy when live as it happened. Yvette was always hard on Obama. Um. Antonio, as it happened, was saying that he didn't vote for. He always said, I didn't vote for Obama one time. So the people that are telling you that Obama wasn't shit, as it happened, Byron Allen, Yvette Carnell, Antonio Moore, now they've been co-opted by the, by the Democratic Party. Why wow, the goddamn Democratic Party is attacking them and trying to paint them as being Trump supporters. It's a stupid conspiracy. You know, somebody needs to tell the truth because Tariq Nasheed is lying. I've never heard him tell a more ball face lie and he's doing it. I think he's doing it because he got checked on goddamn opportunity zones, which is ridiculous, but it's ego because I don't even think Tariq gave a damn about no goddamn opportunity zones. He was like, yeah, you're right. Trump ain't about shit. But I'm trying to to bullshit or mess with the Democratic Party. And they can disagree that that's a bad strategy. That ain't no reason to just start acting like you've been co-opted yourself by the Democratic Party because the people who wanted to divide FBA and ADOS, Democrats. Yes, Democrats specifically immigrants you got duped even though i think tone fell for it first but tone fell for it and that basically was a tweet talking about opportunity zones and why they don't support trump you took that and just threw everything away because y'all complimented each other this is a victory for white supremacy and it's coming from the same Democrats that attack you, the same Democrats that attack ADOS. And another thing I want to say before I get off, this whole notion that, that ADOS is just a lineage, this was always Tariq's inside of his head thing. The goddamn website explains that it's more than a lineage, and it has to be more than a lineage. A lineage, you can't just say, hey, I'm an American descendant of slavery and reparations will come by osmosis. No, you got to be politically savvy. There's work to do. That's a good first step, but there's work. And you're not going to be able to do that work without some type of organization and some type of leadership. And if they're targeted, so what, Tariq? I mean, shit, y'all always want to talk about Yvette being a lesbian and then they're Democrats, yet they're targeted heavy. Because they took on that mantle. The mantle you didn't want to do. Look, you got a family. I get it. But then don't turn around and say, you're making it hot for me. All you got to do is say, hey, it's my lineage. I respect the political movement, but I ain't part of it. Walk away. That's all you had to do. All you had to say. Am I lying? Am I lying? It makes no sense. And this whole, I mean, he went on this big thing about how it, it, they're being deceptive about it being a, um, a, mo um, a movement or a group. It was always a movement or a group before you even had the ADOS hashtag. You had a book club. You were educating the smartest reparation advocacy group in the history of the country. You had all kinds of interviews with specialists and shit. Man, somebody got to tell it. This was already a political movement. They just said, okay, let's give it a name. Well, it's, it's a lineage too. And that's it. You don't got to be part of the political movement. You can be in opposition to it. And look who is opposition to it. Democrats mostly. And the reason why they're opposition to it is because 
Nobody complained when you were saying, hey, no tangibles, no vote, blah, 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 no blah, blah, blah. Because that was always in line enough with voting down ballot. And this is something that they would always say, like, like Yvette makes a good point. The Democratic Party is our party. Without us, it don't work. Take it over. Don't just walk away, give it away. And then you have no relationships, no connections, no people that agree with you to build on. And if, look, and even if you disagree with that and you just want to say, OK, we're going to starve the beast completely. We're just going to sit on our ass and smoke ganja instead of going to the ballot. So what if we end up with stop and frisk? We get that shit anyway, even when we vote. I'm not going to get into a big argument with that. You know, that's you know, that may be your strategy. I may disagree. I think we should be the smartest voters and we should at least show up, if not for nothing but to give a yellow ballot, drop a little drop of urine on that shit. And if you see nobody, nothing to vote for or against, protest vote. That to me is a better strategy than sloth and apathy because sloth and apathy is hard to recover from. Cause then let's say some people do start coming to you. Hey, you know, y'all ain't been voting like you used to. Um, we got, you know, and th then another example of how Tariq is just straight up lying is when he talks about Marianne Williamson. Marianne Williamson from day one, they were they wanted Marianne Williamson to be on the on the de, um, debates because she makes a good argument for reparation. So they supported her that to that extent. But had Tariq done his homework, had he actually watched the goddamn ADOS conference, he would have seen the tone checked her on that amount. And he's checked her more than once. Nope, they are they are on some fifteen trillion dollar shit. I think that's high, especially if you aren't really, you know, I don't see how if fifteen. This is where I disagree with ADUS. If fifteen trillion is realistic, then I think you can't say that the FBA conference is any type of um, expense. You know, because people go to, to go to the club and drop that type of money, and they were kind of exaggerating the cost because they were going with the average, you know, by including the VIP seats, 50 bucks. That ain't shit. Yes, I know about the wealth data. I, I recognized that shit a long time ago. Hell, Tariq recognized that because um, he had Claude Anderson talking about that on Hidden Colors. We know about the wealth data, but $50? If you're trying to get $15 trillion, I don't see how you're going to do it without buying Republicans because you got to burn the candle from both ends. You have some loyalist Democrats, especially on the local level. You don't have shit for Republicans, but Republicans are cheap. I've made the, that, that case a bunch of times that you can just look at how the NRA makes Republicans dance like monkey beasts and act a fool wanting to arm some goddamn teachers. Because without, and I'm not talking serious bread. Not serious bread at all. So I'm okay with, with the FBA conference. I'm not con contributing now because the dude's on some bullshit. I hope he doesn't make the money and he learns a lesson. But before he went off the chain, I was with him against Michi. I think Michi was, was, was being that Florida Evans. <laughs> you know? And that's the thing, Tariq is charismatic. It's not just those funny reparation arguments that completely diffuse that goddamn hucklebuck respectability politics. He also, like the, the Umar Smith, I think that was a reasonable concern and it was funny. But, and even then, I think the whole relationship could have been repaired because Antonio laughed that uh, shit off. He didn't take it to heart as much as I think Yvette did when he was talking about how he could roast him. And I get it because people talk a lot of shit about Yvette and, and that shit. It's not like Yvette can just go over and beat somebody up. You know, it's a lady. You know, I, and I wish, look, if, if I could make Yvette turn into um, Sabretooth from, from Marvel Comics and scratch the fuck out of um, Tlaib Kweli, I'd do that, man. I would love to do that. To just turn her into a goddamn superhero werewolf, send her out at night, and fuck Talib Kali off. That would be beautiful. Matter of fact, I hope God do some shit like that. Because, man, New York, you got to start checking your goddamn coons. This is ridiculous.
we trying to move the needle for black power and we got goddamn bitches like this and you ain't saying shit. Ebro talking about ADOS is MAGA. He hosting goddamn Candace Owens. Fuck it, Ebro. This is bullshit. And Tariq fell for it. You know, and, I, and like I said, he didn't start it. I'll give him that. But you can't be so goddamn sensitive that you got to come up with these goddamn conspiracy theories to shield your own goddamn inequities. And that's how I read it, because I know him. I've... I've studied them to the point where if you look at my graph, I was saying that these people were high on reparations when it comes to moving the needle for black power years before. Well, I won't say years. I'm a, more than a year before the, the hashtag was popping. <laughs> See, now that's going to be the new thing from here on. See, uh, that's what I mean. Like, Tariq is charismatic to now. Everybody's going to say, hey, the ADOS hashtag, it didn't come about. It popped off. <laughs> but for real, I'm not calling it like I see it. I'm calling it like I know it because I recorded it as I saw it. All right. I'm about to head home. Good day of work. Later.